Hi, this is my Ginone, and here's uh, some comic reviews for you. We have some Justice League, some Aquamans, some X-Men's, some Heisting, some Carnage, and some Daredevil. Now, let's take a look at this Forever Evil crossover here with Justice League Dark. Now, basically what they're doing with this is they're just setting the stage for the Constantine storyline, where it's going to be like 18 issues with him looking for the Justice League, and they're going to make you buy titles that you normally probably wouldn't buy other than the Justice League Dark, if you're already reading this. Now, this is also setting the stage for their uh, major new villain that they're creating. Uh, what's his name called? Blight. You know, it's like basically the evil of everybody is forming this cloud and turning into some evil creature. And I'm just, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not enthused by it at all. It, but, um... I'll, word it, I'll say it this way, in terms of a crossover, it's, it does what it needs to do just to get you pulled into what where, where uh, Constantine's place is in time, and it's definitely setting the stage for what is to come, setting up his allies that are going to help him, but um, it's nothing that's what I would call earth-shattering or simply amazing, but, but it, does, it does its job, and I guess that's all that really matters. Okay, the Justice League number 24, Forever Evil uh, tie-in. My biggest complaint about this book is this. They waste so many pages detailing the origin of Ultraman when why wasn't this part of Villains Month? You know, they could have done one issue each of these characters telling us their origins. And that would have been a far better representation of a Villains Month than wasting important page space telling us where where what Ultraman's origin is and what he's up to um, before he landed on Earth or I should say um, you know out this version of Earth and that I was really disappointed on very unbelievably disappointed uh, beyond that now this is this is something that also that I was kind of I was like, I, I, I'm confused with, because I, mean, I don't read Superman anymore, but does Lois Lane not know how to use a computer, or is her thing a typewriter? Because, you know, she's typing, and she actually uses the typewriter to beat on Ultraman's back, and I found that as kind of like, wouldn't you just grab your computer and bash him that way versus a typewriter? But I, like I, said, I don't read Superman to, to know that part of it. And when I did read Superman, she was, I don't think she was read, working on a typewriter. And even Jimmy's camera it doesn't even look like it's a digital camera. It looks like something that's pre-digital age. But anyways, um, the best part of the book, I have to admit, was the Black Adam battle. And, you know, this is, this is what I wanted to see more of. Not wasting time with this. But, um... This is this definitely solidified the ending of the book and making me want to read more of it. Now, also the another thing I really found kind of odd was, you know, if Ultraman has to eat kryptonite to serve, you know, to gain his power, how much kryptonite really landed on that planet for him to eat? You know, it's like I understand that they're making it look like tons and tons and tons of rock fell, but what the heck? And then I don't know. I'm just. It, it's these little inc weird stuff that they put on that just always make me go, did you really plan that out carefully? But anyways, I thought the art was good. You know, Reese does a good job. Uh, the story was, I guess you can say, just average. I mean, anybody could have almost written this because it really didn't do much to it, you know, in terms of characterization or anything like that, other than here's Ultraman and we'll just show you how evil he is. But um, I really did, um, I like, I said the ending was good. Aquaman number 24. Now, this was really bordering on for me for the good. Because what this really was doing is it was really telling the origin of Aquaman. And it I have to admit, they did a nice little swerve thingy going on here. And if that swerve is true, that was, I have to admit, job well done. But I think for me, the reason why it didn't really justify itself as the, the good book is because, you know, like basically for me, what it looked like was they're just 
doing stuff for shock value rather than to tell you the, a, a really compelling story. And then the other thing, too, that just drives me insane is, you know, this took place six months after the events that occurred in Aquaman 23, and yet nobody knows that this is going on. So it's kind of like this story is taking place out of time, out of place, and then they'll probably address it somewhere by going a page somewhere. Oh, yeah, this forever evil happened over a 24-hour period. Or you know, something stupid like that. Let's see. Next up, we have Wolverine and the X-Men Battle of the Atom. Now, while I am very happy that Aaron has advancing this story, finally, we do get some nice little fighting. We get some nice lines from Iceman. Um, nice little interaction between older and younger Quentin. The art is just horrendous. It is just god-awful. And, you know, the one thing that they can really do to really drive an event down is have good art followed by god-awful art. And that's just a shame. Because, you know, like, other than that, I mean, the book was actually, story-wise, I was enjoying it, but I just couldn't just get into this thing. It was just a freaking mess. Um, but what we're getting here is, like I said, they basically, the Brotherhood are, you know, trying to basically further their plans. They're trying to set the stage for, uh, you know, like this great evil to occur. And since they, they're not able to send the X-Men back into, the old X-Men back into time. And um, S.H.I.E.L.D., of course, is looking really stupid. But that that's not surprising with that. But there's some really nice interactions up on the helicarrier type thing. But uh, this would have been, like I said, a really solid book if they just had a competent artist who really knew how to draw well. Next up is Heist. Uh, I can say this uh, about this book. The book actually does tie into the Infinity a bit because basically Blizzard turns into an Inhuman. So there's that part of it. And they're basically... The, this issue here is just setting the stage for the big heist. Now Blizzard and Whirlwind want to break out of this and not be involved. But of course they know too much so they're going to get dragged into it. Whether or not they like it or not. But I mean it's a... I guess you can say it's an interesting read so far. Because I, for me, at least, I'm always interested in what's going on with the super villains, and you know, just tagging Infinity onto it is just—I don't know—it's it, basically living on the outskirts of it, at least until uh, Blizzard turned into an Inhuman. I, I think the art's decent overall, and you know, it, it, I'll tell you—it's not going to break records or anything like that in terms of like a win awards for great story content, but it was a decent read. Superior Carnage. Overall, this was a good. This was actually a really good action issue. Uh, the way Superior Spider-Man was handling the three villains was great. You also f have the first person to realize um, that's not Peter. And I thought that part was good. That whole interaction between that scene with a uh, wizard finding that out and Spider-Man dropping him. That part was great. The ending was a little bit on the surprising side, but um, overall I really enjoyed it. This has been actually an enjoyable read overall. I think the art has been solid, the writing has been pretty solid, and if you haven't been buying this already, this is definitely heading towards a tradable series for sure. And finally, Daredevil Man Without Fear number 32. To me this just looks like, hey let's just have fun tied in with the Sons of Serpent and let's make it a Halloween issue and at the same time we have these ho these horror monsters that are uh, we need to put them back into the uh, stories again so this way we can protect their IP that's to me what's going on here because I don't think they really needed to do what they did with this the best part of this issue though is the interaction with a uh, um, jester because like the jester's watching this setup where you know you have Foggy's you know hung and then you know Matt's just ignoring the fact that that's Foggy's like that's not even a person that's a rubber doll thing 
and the Chester's just getting pissed off, and he's like, what the hell are you doing? And at the same time, it's like, there's the suicide note with the cyanide on it, so this way if Matt, in theory, would have grabbed the note, he would have died, but Matt just gives two Fs, doesn't even realize it's there, paying attention to it. So, that part, all of that part, this beginning, to me, was just, was truly entertaining. And, you know, I almost didn't even re read this book for this review part, but after just looking through it and reading the Jester part, I had to read it uh, before the review. The horror monster part at the end, I'm not sure how this is going to actually play out, but the ending was quite surprising. I won't spoil it, but now they're really giving you a reason to have the horror monsters there, so to speak. But... Um, I guess what I can say is I think this is the type of issue where you're just going to have to sit back. It's going to be probably on the fun side. You know, considering all the other issues with the Sons of Serpent have been kind of, um, you know, not not really intense, but, you know, it's dealing with the racism and things like that. And it's a very, like, tough story in a sense. And now they're just having some fun with it. So that's the way I'm kind of looking at it is. Wade's just having fun. And it's, it's you know, Halloween time, so let's throw in the vampire. I'm at the vampire the Frankenstein, the mummy, and there's actually some really nice pictures between the mummy with fire and stuff like that. So it's enjoyable. Anyways, that is my reviews. Oh, dang it, I forgot to give you some codes. Um, let's see, we'll give you this one. And I'll give you this one. And this one. Anyways, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Rate the video, like the Facebook link, crunch your old anime reviews, and um, I'll have more stuff up later. So, until next time.